That first summer, they set me way out in the countryside, nothing but lush fields as far as the eye could see, and the occasional lowing of cows from a nearby dairy farm. About a half mile up the road, an abandoned one-room schoolhouse sat mourning the loss of small prairie faces, scrubbed clean as January and eager to learn. Mornings I'd take my coffee out to the porch and watch a bed of flowers, bright pink and yellow and blaze orange, receive callers, fat bumblebees, hard at work, hard at work, and a perfect little hummingbird, so delicate he could rest on a daisy without it so much as quivering. Nights I'd return to the porch to lie on my back and take in the stars, innumerable and dizzying those pinholes of light in a blue-black blanket. Orion rushed my senses and I'd reel in wonder, higher than any drug could make me. Sometimes I'd stroll down the street, right smack in the center of the road, and the farther I wandered, the darker my path, lit only by fireflies dancing on crops, a soundscape of crickets and locusts and frogs. I once startled a deer who was sleeping beside the road in a bed of sweet corn, belly full after an evening's binge. I don't know who was more frightened by the run-in, she or I, but I apologized for the inconvenience and thanked her for her grace. Finding my way back was always easy. The only light that wasn't nature-made was a single bare bulb which hung over my driveway, luring every winged insect to its alien glow. I, too, would drift toward its strangeness, half hoping each time that a beautiful man might be lingering in its pool, whistling or smoking or perhaps reading a Faulkner paperback. The little house ached for a farmer and his family, and at night, with the windows open, I'd bake things to revive the old kitchen with smells of spices long since forgotten. The morning after often found a wayward field mouse dead in a trap, the temptation of apple cake too much for his tiny pink nose to resist. Once, after an evening at the stove, I stood washing a sink full of dishes when a neon green luna moth, so large it looked like a puppet, appeared at the window and danced before me for a full twenty minutes, a virtuoso with fiery eyes and magical fluidity. And every now and again, while sweeping the worn wood floors by moonlight, My broom handle became a microphone, the room a nightclub, and I'd sing into the hazy, humid air, serenading the cows with soulful ballads accompanied by strings and woodwinds that only I could hear. I like to think I'll never give a better performance than those solo concerts in the still country quiet of 1999. And I like to think that the milk that came the following morning, expressed with firm, calloused hands, was especially sweet and creamy and white. So long as I live, so live these memories. The lowing of cows at midnight. The luna moth fluttering at the window. The crunch of gravel road beneath my feet. The hummingbird alighting on pink gerbera daisies. The small dead mice. The constellations. And my strong, sure voice singing to innocent creatures in the dark.